Oh, you talking about PD? Yeah, it's in the same. Yeah, bro. man, yeah, that's all over the news. I see, we see that, we watch. And what's crazy is, what well, you know, I know, you know, because we just been in his every summer. But if they detain him, that's when all <laughs> is gonna be lining up with their hand in air. Yeah. All these, you gotta get them, turn on your camera, let them tell you who they is, put their ID up, let them tell you where they at. So you all must have heard about Diddy's house getting raided. It has got everyone raising their eyebrows. Despite all the frenzy, he has been denying all those allegations. But if he's innocent, why are the feds busting into his place? It's got everybody shook. Recent reports suggest that 50 Cent also talked about this. But get this, R. Kelly, who's already in the slammer, decided to join the chat too. Crazy, right? Let's dive into this mess. Why right. I want to go bad. They can extort you or cover the accusations. Crazy, man. It's crazy. Well, I say, Motherfucker, out there laughing and make, making comedian jokes. And In a recent chat with WAC 100 on Clubhouse, R. Kelly, who's currently locked up for his heinous crimes, decided to weigh in on Sean Diddy Combs' legal battles. Now, Kelly's no stranger to the courtroom himself. He's serving a hefty sentence for a laundry list of awful stuff, including CS crimes. This guy's rap sheet is as long as a CVS receipt. He got 20 years in prison today. He will serve all but one of those years simultaneously with a 30-year sentence for racketeering and Remember that Kelly has been behind bars since 2022, first slapped with 30 years for racketeering and ST. Then, just to pile it on, he got another 20 years in 2023 for CP and luring young people. Talk about a double whammy. One of his biggest scandals was marrying Aaliyah when she was just a kid back in 94. Robert's doing his thing, I'm doing my thing. He's a great producer, great artist, who I do admire, and um, there's, there's nothing, nothing there at all. During the conversation, Kelly delved into the complexities of organizing events and advised celebrities about the possible legal risks stemming from misunderstandings or unfounded allegations of misconduct. The S is crazy. M out there laughing and making comedian jokes and doing all the other S on the radio and everything else, but they could be next. R. Kelly warned, that's what's so F up about. They so stupid they don't even realize the moves that's going on. I don't believe none of this S. You could tell me about Puffy. You could about anybody. You could tell me on the news, the weather, the sky is blue. I'm not gonna believe the S, cause I'm in it now, and I know what they did. R. Kelly further conveyed his concerns about the changing societal norms that leave public figures vulnerable to extortion and false accusations. Regarding Diddy's ongoing legal troubles, which involve a federal investigation into allegations of ST, including R, SA, and coercion of women and a young person, Kelly highlighted the broader issues and potential injustices within the justice system. Additionally, he expressed skepticism about the credibility of evidence and testimonies presented in his own trials, maintaining his innocence. They want they, you if they want to plan to get you or if it's a conspiracy, yeah. anything, they put you in cuffs, bro. <laughs> no, that's real. And I've been telling people, I've been preaching, I said, yo, one thing all they taught me, what I didn't know. Not only R. Kelly, his legal team is also talking about Diddy. A person who is well-versed in cases like this is R. Kelly's prosecutor, Nadia Shihada, who recently appeared on News Nation to talk about the specifics of this case. She is the one who secured the 31-year jail sentence against R. Kelly. According to what Shihada says, Diddy's legal team is now only protected by the potential non-disclosure agreements that the rapper's alleged victims might have signed. In her experience, people who signed NDAs are generally reluctant to speak to authorities or investigators about anything related to the case. She said, obviously, taking an overt step and investigation of searching two homes means the investigation is well underway here. She continued, they have clearly have probable cause to believe a federal crime has been committed and that evidence of that crime or multiple crimes would be found in the two locations that they searched. So this is big news. And if I'm P. Diddy or his lawyers, I'd be very concerned at this point. An NDA that when push comes to shove is not going to trump a grand jury subpoena or a federal agent or prosecutor asking you questions. But I wouldn't say that they are, that they have no effect. NDAs can make people very reluctant and hesitant to speak to law enforcement. So if it's someone that law enforcement is not already aware of, they may be wary to, you know, themselves contact law enforcement to provide information. And so they can still deter people in that sense. 
So there he is, chatting away about hosting shindigs and dropping advice for celebs about staying clear of legal trouble. If anyone knows about getting caught up in the legal mess, it's him. But fans believe that it is wild to hear him giving out pointers while he's locked up for some seriously messed up stuff. One person commented, R. Kelly stay out this you already in hot water with your own situation. Another one added, right is right and wrong is wrong. We don't condone that underage-ish. R. Kelly's known as a big-time creep in the hip-hop world, with all those messed up stories about him being a S.O. and T. The bravery of the women who spoke out against him is just heroic, no doubt. But now it looks like P. Diddy's in the same boat, facing even worse accusations of S.T., including some seriously disturbing stuff like T. Fitness influencers, and even alleged P. This case is gonna keep on unfolding for months, and who knows what we'll find out in the end. But in some cases, R. Kelly's and Diddy's are considered to have uncanny resemblances. Every day, there's a new social media headline confirming confirming what many of us suspected since the New York Times spilled the beans about Cassie Ventura's S.A. lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs on November 16, 2023. Diddy's been in the game for 30 years, but now, his star's fading fast as the cancel culture mobs come for him daily. After keeping quiet for years, Cassie finally spoke up through her legal team saying, I'm ready to tell my story and stand up for myself and other women facing violence and A in their relationships. Her statement might have been simple, but it came with a hefty lawsuit detailing horror horrifying acts allegedly committed by her longtime boyfriend Diddy. It sets off a chain reaction that's got enough momentum to at least shut Diddy up, and at worst, could land him in jail. The whole thing's like deja vu from R. Kelly's downfall after the surviving R. Kelly documentary dropped in 2019. Appalled by his fellow entertainment mogul's actions, Curtis 50 Cent Jackson isn't staying silent. He's announced that his production team will be putting together a documentary shining a light on the disturbing allegations against Diddy. The focus? Diddy's alleged acts of R and S, A against four different women, with one of them being underage when it happened. And according to some sources, it can be Aaliyah. And when it comes to Aaliyah, many names come to mind like Jay-Z's R. Kelly and Diddy. Now, some people believe that Jay-Z could have never demeaned Aaliyah if he had not Diddy and R. Kelly's support. The whole situation with Aaliyah's case is seriously tangled up, especially with R. Kelly in the mix. There's talk going around that some of the alleged victims in R. Kelly's trial might have been pressured into giving false testimony testimony, which raises questions about whether the court's handling things right. Now, there's this leaked audio supposedly featuring a federal informant saying they flipped one of R. Kelly's witnesses. Sharon Winbush, a former employee of R. Kelly, is stepping forward, saying she's the one who sent out that audio. She claims the voice in the clip belongs to a federal informant who allegedly pushed a witness to make up stuff about her real connection with R. Kelly. Winbush says this was all part of a bigger scheme to sabotage R. Kelly's defense. The singer was seeking the appeals court to either overturn his conviction or grant him a new trial. It's worth noting that in a separate trial in Chicago, Kelly had previously been sentenced to 20 years in prison in February after being found guilty of CP and enticing a young person, as reported by TMZ. During the Chicago trial, Kelly's attorney expressed similar concerns, stating that the government's burden cannot be met with the inference of bad character or tendency to commit crimes. You may consider him to be the most immoral, dishonest person on the planet, and that has nothing to do with whether the government has met its burden. At that time, a judge ordered Kelly to serve 19 of the 20 years concurrently with his other sentence. Yet another legal representative for R. Kelly petitioned the judge overseeing his ST case to vacate his conviction and initiate a new trial. The basis for this request is the argument that his trial attorneys displayed incompetence and that the singer was unjustly depicted as a seal deviant to the jury. Because defendant was forced to defend against dozens of uncharged claims of A and S misbehavior, much of it lawful albeit unpalatable for some, defendant was stripped of the presumption of innocence and denied a fair trial, attorney Jennifer Bonjean wrote in a legal memorandum filed to court. However, there are some speculations that Jay might have been involved with R. Kelly in the case. According to reports, Jay-Z was the one who got the whole documentary surviving R. Kelly up and running. Jay-Z may have provided the funds for Dream Hampton to make the documentary about Kelly's accusations. Looks like Jay-Z really wanted Kelly Kelly's career to be over. If you don't believe Ronnie's word on Jay-Z's role in the case, maybe this will do the trick. This case wasn't the first time that Jay-Z had helped Dream financially. In fact, the rapper wired tens of thousands of dollars in minutes after she asked him to help with expenses protesters incurred while demonstrating against police brutality. If Jay-Z was ready to give tens of thousands of dollars to her, it's not shocking that he also decided to fund the documentary she was making. Jay is so open-hearted with Hampton because the two happened to 
to have a long history. You know, Dream Hampton was his ex-girlfriend. Dream Hampton wrote his the decoded. You know, he, mm. he, he funded her protests in Ferguson. He the narrative suggests that Jay-Z seized an opportunity by financing Dream's documentary, which not only gave her career a significant boost, but also contributed to the downfall of R. Kelly. But the text implies that Jay-Z had a substantial list of motivations. Chief among them was a lawsuit that not only left Jay-Z's reputation tarnished, but also resulted in a financial setback of $70 million. It, it was a little deeper than the best of both you know, R. Kelly sued him for like seventy million dollars after. That. R. Kelly not only messed up Jay Z's tour, but also ended up winning the lawsuit against him, costing Jay Z millions. But that wasn't the end of it. Jay Z knew that if Kelly came out of this trial unscathed, he'd spill the beans sooner or later. After all, Jay Z's got his own secrets too. Damon Dash, who was Aaliyah's boyfriend when she passed away, spilled some tea about Jay Z's interest in Aaliyah. He said Jay Z was trying to get with her, even when she was underage. I didn't know. Jay was trying to holler at her, but then it just happened like that. He was trying, I was trying, everybody was trying, he was going hard, Damon revealed. Apparently, Aliyah may have turned Jay-Z down or kept him in the friend zone. No wonder Jay-Z had beef with Kelly. Kelly managed to marry the girl Jay-Z was into. Damon also said Jay-Z got all resentful when he found out Damon was into Aaliyah too. Damon admitted he had some feelings about it, but it was no secret. People acted like he was really involved with her, even though he was just sending gifts and making romantic gestures. They both were trying hard, and it just so happened they ended up in the same place on the 4th of July. So we were both going hard, and we, right. en and we ended up in the same house 4th, 4th of July, so we were... For some reason, this, this day... Wait a minute, you, Jay, and Aaliyah ended up in the same house. Yeah. It was a real tug of war for Aaliyah's attention, with her swaying toward Jay-Z one moment and then toward Damon the next. Damon stressed how he stayed consistent in his pursuit of her, saying, but that week I was on fire. Every word I said was smooth, you know what I mean? He recalled a specific moment, saying, I remember walking downstairs and Jay-Z had this sigh. His buddies were ribbing him and cracking jokes. But it looks like Jay-Z came out on top in the end and reported Reports suggest he did indeed date Aaliyah at some point. However, it is believed that it is all because Jay-Z wanted Bay to raise her career. And this idea was apparently propagated by Jaguar Wright. I'm going to tell you something right now, Sean, because I know you're watching. Or you have someone watching. I'm going to admit something right here on AT2 channel. Jaguar Wright's take on Aliyah's tragic passing adds a fascinating layer to the ongoing conversation. According to her, when Aliyah died unexpectedly, Beyonce was facing hurdles in her solo career and needed a breakthrough moment to catapult her to superstardom. Apparently, Jay-Z played a role in helping her with that. Aliyah's tragic death seemingly provided that crucial push, ultimately cementing Beyonce's status as the queen of many hearts. See how good I keep secrets, Sean? And I'm going to tell you something else and I'll give you this one for free. As time goes on and memories of Aliyah fade, questions arise about how long certain individuals will continue to benefit from recurring tragedies. Some argue that it's high time for accountability for any potential wrongdoing to come to light. And some people believe that Jay-Z would have never done this alone. He apparently has an upper hand, Diddy. And sources suggest that Jay-Z and R. Kelly together took advantage of Aliyah, which may have profited Diddy from his business ventures or even hiding his alleged dark secrets. <laughs> Man. And it's exposed, so that's the difference. I mean, like it's not proof of it. It's on paper, it's everything, you know. It's like, you know, crazy, man. The stuff we've been finding out, man. Is well, again, talking about R. Kelly's case, the Hash Me Too movement originated in 2006 thanks to S. A Survivor and activist Tarana Burke, but it didn't gain widespread attention until 2017 when it started calling out some of Hollywood's biggest names, like legendary film producer Harvey Weinstein. While the movement initially focused on the film and TV industry, there were whispers within the music biz about S. A. and coercion going unnoticed. R. Kelly's been under suspicion since the early 90s when he brought his underage protege to BET's 106. N Park, claiming they were tight. People went nuts when they saw R. Kelly and a 15-year-old Aaliyah sitting side by side dressed alike, especially after legal docs revealed they were married. Fast forward over 20 years, and R. Kelly's finally behind bars for a laundry list of offenses, including SMST and CP. R. Kelly is spending more time in prison after being sentenced federally for <laughs> an enticement of but the story's different for Sean Combs, AKA Diddy. While Cassie was young when she first crossed paths with him, the allegations against Diddy go beyond just that. They mainly revolve around accusations of him allegedly 
her to endure years of physical, S, and psychological A, spanning a whole decade. Once Cassie's lawsuit hit the headlines, numerous other young women stepped up with similar accounts, describing experiences of purportedly being D, S, ad, and physically mistreated by Diddy. Or on her. Through their time together, Diddy, uh, Cassie claims that Diddy would regularly push make her carry around in her purse while out in public. But how people are finding similarities in Diddy's and R. Kelly's case? Diddy's public image shares some unsettling similarities with R. Kelly's for several reasons. Both men have long been hailed as titans in the urban music scene, but alongside their success comes a dark cloud of violence and exploitation that's followed them for years. When Cassie's lawsuit against Diddy hit the public eye, social media wasn't just reacting to the allegations themselves. The shock and outrage were more about the audacity of someone actually suing the music mogul. As far as I could go, uh, I stood up last night, maybe four hours praying for him and his kids. Just like R. Kelly, former employees and associates of Diddy have come forward with chilling accounts of violence and A, allegedly perpetrated by him against women, and even some men who tried to date his exes. Cassie's lawsuit even detailed a troubling incident where she spent time with music artist Kid Cootie against Diddy's wishes. When she refused to comply with his demands to stay away from Cootie, Diddy supposedly threatened to blow up Cootie's car, and not long after, Cootie's car was indeed destroyed. Diddy threatened to blow up the rapper Kid Cudi car in 2012 when he and Cassie were briefly linked. Despite their undeniable success, talent, and influence, the idea of R. Kelly or Diddy facing consequences for their alleged actions seemed unthinkable for many. And none other than 50s have been pretty vocal about this upcoming project. And he's making it clear that any profits from the documentary will go straight to nonprofits helping victims of domestic violence and SA. The shocking revelations of R. Kelly's alleged predatory behavior against multiple victims spanning two decades, as depicted in a three-part docu-series, forced fans to confront the rumors surrounding the star. The public outrage stirred by the docu-series didn't go unnoticed by state prosecutors, who swiftly began building a case against R. Kelly. Testimony from victims featured in the docu-series provided substantial evidence that could be used in a court of law. Now, with 50 Cent's promise of a documentary shedding light on Diddy's alleged actions, critics are suggesting that a similar scenario might unfold for him. Just as with R. Kelly, the documentary could generate public outcry and pressure authorities to take action, potentially leading to a legal reckoning for Diddy. And if you're on 50's bad side, bro, God bless you, man. <laughs> Protect you because he is not letting that foot off your Ever. For nearly three decades, Diddy's brand has been synonymous with a lifestyle of black opulence and achievement. Alongside his reign in the music world, his partnerships with spirit and clothing brands have propelled Diddy to the status of one of the wealthiest black men in the nation. However, beneath the surface of the lavish parties, luxurious trips, and seemingly perfect lifestyle, there have always been murmurs of alleged violence, intimidation, and a former artist Mark Curry recently came forward, alleging that he witnessed young female artists being D with specially tagged bottles of A at parties. Aubrey O'Day, a former member of Danity Kane, expressed her disgust for her former employer and voiced her support for Cassie Ventura. Blind items from former acquaintances and employees who still fear retaliation but want to show solidarity with other victims have started surfacing on social media. While there is a never-ending list of accusations against Diddy, there are reports suggesting that Diddy might be linked to his wife Kim Porter's death. The narrative surrounding Kim Porter's passing has taken a dark twist. Kim's best friend, Kimora Lee Simmons, Simmons, has called for the investigation into her friend's unsolved death to be reopened. Kimora is adamant that she can't just go on with life as usual when the truth might be hidden. This implies that she might know something shady about what really happened to Kim. Between those two, physically, but Kim got tired of it and she wasn't taking her. If he put his hands on her, she was going at him. Kimora Lee rushed to Kim's house as soon as she heard the news, and the photos are proof that she was utterly devastated. The sight of her friend's lifeless body was so upsetting for her that she couldn't stop wondering what could have possibly happened to Kim because there were literally no scenes of her being sick. But due to some recent revelations, it seems that Kim's death because of pneumonia is some baloney. Well, the fact that the deputy coroner, who was in charge of the investigation, passed away literally only a few weeks ago is the first thing that is making people suspicious about the case. This is the same coroner who discovered a potentially dangerous poison when he was investigating the circumstances behind Kim Porter's death. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body. 
The coroner at the time stated that the circumstances surrounding Kim's death required further investigation, but he was later replaced by another coroner, and it took that new coroner a huge amount of time to determine that the cause of Kim's death was pneumonia. This is where the story got shady because the new coroner never spoke about the toxins found in Kim's body. Was he hired by someone? And according to some reports in the last days, Kim and Diddy were not on good terms. So this is how reports have circulated to Diddy's alleged involvement in such dark acts. The fallout for Diddy has been swift and severe. According to Rolling Stone, 18 companies have terminated their partnerships with Diddy's e-commerce platform, Empower Global. The Source magazine reports that his clothing brand, Sean John, is being phased out and will no longer be sold in Macy's department stores in 2024. To compound his troubles, Radar Online states that a representative for the Recording Academy has confirmed they are considering rescinding Diddy's invitation to the upcoming 2024 Grammys. We are taking this matter very seriously, and we are in the process of evaluating it with the time and care that it deserves," the representative stated. Additionally, the hip-hop industry has long struggled with blurred lines concerning toxic masculinity and misogyny. It's heartening to witness the gatekeepers of the culture rallying together in solidarity against alleged and pre behavior. Initially, 50 Cent's response to Diddy's alleged actions may have seemed lighthearted, but as more disturbing allegations surfaced in the media, it became alarming how numerous leaders in a billion-dollar industry could seemingly ignore ongoing complaints and rumors of A against women. One person commented, This is one of the most horrific domestic A cases ever. He needs to be sent to prison, period. It takes a strong person to talk about this. He tried to ruin her life. I do hope Cassie is getting the help she needs. It's also time to re open Kim Porter's case and all those others who passed around Diddy, I'm talking about those who were writing tell all books. This man is sick period. Carisha get out now. This A is a lifelong journey. It sticks with you forever. Even when you're out of that relationship. Another one added, absolutely heartbroken. I worked in domestic violence for years. These experiences happen all too often and go on for years. This type of A, especially with this kind of power dynamic, takes years to break free from and longer to recover from. One more person went on saying, damn, we are in the season of revelation. A lot is coming to light in such a short period of time. I wish Cassie strength and healing during this time. While there are indeed notable similarities between R. Kelly and Diddy, it's crucial to recognize that there are also several significant differences between them. R. Kelly was a big deal in the R&B scene, writing and producing jams not just for himself but for others too. But let's face it, his fan base was mostly R&B folks. Then there's Diddy. He's like a giant in the entertainment world. His appeal goes way beyond just one genre, sometimes it feels like he's in a league of his own. And unlike creeps like Weinstein or Epstein, Diddy's got that charm, you know? People see him as both a talent and a mogul behind the scenes. If someone dropped a doc about Diddy's alleged shadiness over his 30-year career, it'd be huge way bigger than surviving R. Kelly. In addition to the subject nature, having the series produced by one of the biggest names in hip-hop turned film and television will also create an audience that no other documentary has seen thus far. Surviving R. Kelly served a much bigger purpose than the producers initially realized when they put the series together. The series created an opportunity for the victims to have a safe space to speak up for themselves, and even more importantly, to heal. The same courage seen in the victims who sat down with the team that produced Surviving R. Kelly is present in Cassie Ventura and the other three ladies who have finally spoken up against the pain and torment allegedly inflicted upon them by Diddy. Diddy has been accused of and a lot of other crimes by his ex-girlfriend Cassie in a huge lawsuit that details the disturbing claim. Their bravery could be a lifeline for other victims who've been suffering in silence. And it's not just about them, it's about hip hop as a whole. It's time for the whole culture to stand up and say, enough is enough. We've gotta redefine what it means to be part of this community, making sure it's a place where everyone, men and women, can thrive without fear of lurking in the shadows. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.